Virtual Racing School was developed to provide support to the next generation of sim racers. No matter if you're a rookie or veteran or what car or track you'll be racing, our goal is to provide training every step of the way. We found that iRacing can be quite difficult without proper training. There needed to be a way to prepare for on-track racing. With VRS, you can literally learn from the best sim racers in the world, including four-time NASCAR iRacing world champion Ray Alfala. And Ray Alfala is a four-time champion of the NASCAR Pekin of Freeze iRacing series. Three-time iRacing Grand Prix world champion Martin Cronke. Martin Cronke becomes a three-time world champion. Rallycross world champion Mitchell de Jong. Mitchell de Jong is now champion for the iRacing Rallycross World Championship Series. And many other top sim racers. Data packs include everything you need to start learning. Our world championship coaches create the data packs by setting a hot lap or a series of fast laps for you to compare, analyze, and replicate. Data packs also include a tutorial where the coach points out techniques they use to hit the fast lap. This gives you access to the latest driving techniques and setups before you even hit the track. Sign up for a free account and download the VRS telemetry logger. With this application running seamlessly in the background, your laps automatically start syncing to the VRS website. From there, you can analyze and compare two laps of your choice, whether it's your data, the coaches, or your teammates. VRS will automatically target improvement opportunities so you can get up to speed even faster. VRS also makes it easy for you to request and schedule one-on-one -on -one or group coaching sessions. These sessions can range from 30 to 90 minutes and you can select the car, track and setup combination of your choice. Visit virtualracingschool.com today to sign up and get started. Hello and welcome to round 3 of the Apex Racing Academy Formula 3 Virtual Racing School Super Series. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick, alongside me is Marco Barbonier and we are going to bring you through all the action over the two races tonight for this round of the season on Apex Racing TV. Uh, we are at Montreal for this round of the championship, this circuit in existence for many decades and always a hotbed for fantastic racing in single seaters. And I think that's what we're going to have tonight. Marco, we've had a couple of outstanding uh, races, particularly Phillip Island one week ago was great fun. And hopefully we see more of the same tonight. Absolutely, Sam. Hello, everyone. Hello to you, Sam. And yes, this is going to be fantastic. And we move to a completely different racetrack than Phillip Island, but uh, uh, in its own way, another track that is going to be absolutely challenging for the drivers. Uh, whilst in Phillip Island, if you made a mistake, you were basically uh, destined for a long and lonely ride in the grass, the gravel, and eventually the tire wall. Or as you were saying multiple times, maybe hoping for that, you know, the, the sea, but uh, or the ocean, I should say. But well, here the trip is much, much shorter. You have walls all around the racetrack, minimal run of areas. So mistakes are going to be punished as well, uh, probably even more than Phillip Island. Yeah, and the potential for pileups as well, particularly the first sector of the lap, could be uh, could be an issue for the drivers. And there will be two race starts because we're back to the A racing format. 
which is two 25-minute races. The first one is ordered by the qualifying session, which is just starting now. You may be seeing the cars leave the uh, the pit lane now. And then the second race will be another 25-minute race, but with the top six of the uh, race one results inverted. So it'll be sixth position from race one results on pole for race two. So you desperately want to be in that top six. 22 drivers out on track at the moment with uh, potentially a couple of others still to make a very late appearance and everyone rushing out on circuit straight away or everyone out on circuit with one another uh, unlike uh, last time that we visited this uh, track last season this was a solo qualifying but everyone on track with one another and they get as many lap times as they wish and I guarantee they will be going faster and faster as the session goes on. Uh, currently it is this man Mats Kestrin Batken at the uh, front of the train but uh, I'm not sure if you want to necessarily be there, Mark. I mean, you've got plenty of time in this session. You've got, you know, 10 minutes. That's not the longest lap in the world. Potentially, it might be worth trying to set yourself up to get a nice draft down that final straight in order to get those couple of tenths. But early on in the session, maybe you'll be more uh, prioritizing just getting a bank lap in. Absolutely, Sam. You are absolutely correct. By the way... Um, uh, especially because there is not a lot of space in, in this place so you really need to be working uh, very very carefully now of course if you had uh, a software like stk gaming stk gaming dash stk dash gaming dot uk you would have uh, a track map on your uh, on your live ad which you could use to see you know i like to do in f1 uh, with the pockets of space on the G on gps uh, otherwise you need to have a spotter or, or luck you know or good planning good maths you know you to get on track at the correct time. By the way, and I apologize for that, I forgot to show you the standings. And here they are. Yeah, so just two meetings into the season. We've got eight across the uh, championship, so still very much the uh, the early parts. But uh, it is Olsen currently at the top. He's got three wins already has Tobias Olsen. Race 2 win at uh, Hockenheim and then race 1 and race 2 win at Philip Highland. Uh, but he's been far from dominant because Kitiago Mato, the defending champion, also the IGP Fun champion, uh, it up there in second place. Michael Schachs won't be around tonight. He did not serve a pit lane start in round 2 of the championship so he misses this round and that could really be a uh, harmful for his championship. And uh, in the amateur championship, it's also very close. Christian Glam sets it at the top in his debut ARL season. Uh, but Justin Negretti has really been the fastest driver of anyone. And so really uh, probably put your money behind Justin because uh, he was looking very quick in practice. Early run as well, Russell, uh, Minot and Helgerud all still in the mix. And in fact, really... Uh, there's a few drivers who have joined for this round of the uh, championship. Great to see Stephen Westerhoff back and a, a couple of other competitive drivers in both the pro and the abs. And really, this early on in the season, you could still very much bring it back, as we found out with Nick Madsen. I always use that example, Marco, when he won the uh, Porsche Cup championship a few seasons ago, missed the first round of the season and uh, brought it back. And that was only, uh, only seven meetings, I believe, that season. So really these early stages we, we, we can kind of jump to conclusions but there's a long long way to go absolutely absolutely and uh, if i'm not mistaken uh, from now on there will be no more uh, um, off weeks for this championship correct me if i'm wrong sam so basically i uh, just it, one off week yeah just one quick week so basically it's uh, you know you need to be on uh, you know Trying, of course, there is drop scores, as you were saying, but you want to stay in the groove, especially if you are doing well. So for uh, for Jlax, who was sitting uh, in the top positions of the championship, certainly not the ideal moment. But of course, uh, you know, to quote Gennaro Gattuso, the rules for me are very important. You know, uh, unfortunately, the rules, uh, you know, caught him in uh, you know in an irregular position, and they will have to watch this one from the stands as. Uh, is Niklas Rasmussen, who unfortunately is not racing with us tonight due to hardware issues. Uh, if you remember, I think it was in the F3 race last week where he had a hardware failure uh, during the, one of the races. And I think he's still working on fixing that uh, for, uh, for the uh, upcoming races. So, But gracefully, he's in the chat with us uh, enjoying the evening of action. Yeah, Niklas, uh, we always say it. 
uh, absolute veteran of single seaters. I mean, he's been. Uh, we, we remember broadcasting the uh, the Grand Prix series, I think, back in 2018, um, which uh, Nicholas was uh, very competitive in, uh, with a few other championships as well. So yeah, hope to see Nicholas back uh, in the near future. Uh, plenty of times being posted. In fact, most of the drivers have got a time in the books. Just Scarrett and Russell are yet to um, complete a, a lap time. Uh, but you'll see that uh, time and time continue to flash green. I expect that pole time of Marteau to be beaten. Westerhoff in his first race of the season up there in second position, just popping up there. And also Boberg into, uh, well, now 16th because Scarrett puts us in his first time. And also uh, uh, Beer was able to move up into 10th position there with the uh, very cool livery that he's got. Of course, his uh, brother, Matez, I believe it was this round of the championship, or this circuit, sorry, in the GT4 championship where he got the groovy Austin Powers uh, nickname. So quite a <laughs> historic track for that family. That is uh, one hell of a tangent. Marteau, 28.929, yeah, that's the first lap of the race, of, of the qualifying, apologies, and Tobias Olsson uh, jumps up to second with uh, 29.440, Westerhoff down to third, Negretti, leader of the amateurs, in front of uh, Christian Enden. I mean, there is a sizable Norwegian. Uh, we saw that also in Porsche Cup uh, last season, no? Uh, there was a truckload of Norwegian, Norwegian drivers, uh, no pun intended, and the same here in the F3s right now, of course. Uh, some of these drivers are also doing uh, the uh, Norwegian Sector League, which we, we are broadcasting as well. And uh, uh, bl the blue sector and the green sector, if I'm not mistaken, the blue sector is the one with the F3s we had uh, around in Branzach a few weeks ago. So Max Gerson-Bakken is one of the drivers that's there, but he's not the only one, absolutely. So keeping themselves sharp with these cars. Westerhoff, with his all-white car, jumps up into second place overall, 29.190. But Tiago Marto not only has the pole position so far, but he also has purple sector one, two and three in his previous lap. So best lap all around in this session for Tiago Marto. That, that, that's very impressive. And uh, Marte not always getting pole position. I mean, you know, he, he's definitely been the, the best driver over the last uh, kind of season and a half, but he's, he's very consistent between the races and qualifying, maybe may a bit more competitive in the races. So uh, that is uh, really impressive to be half a second clear of, uh, of Olsen and, uh, well, nine tenths clear of fourth position, be really the biggest gaps that we've seen this season after a few very close qualifiers in recent weeks. Uh, Gestrin back in just improving again to eighth position. Uh, the drivers on out laps have got to be starting their lap fairly soon. This is a 1 minute 30 lap time. And so uh, if you're not crossing the line with uh, 1 minute 30 to go, then you are gone because you have to complete the lap time before the time has run out. Rosenkrantz up to 11th place, Snell up to uh, 19th. Let's see if Westerhoff can improve this time. It was a personal best second sector, but I don't think it's going to be really enough to rival Marteau. Torp moves up to fourth, and Westerhoff does improve, but uh, just fractions of that uh, already very impressive time. You know, every time uh, I, I do this series uh, and I'm on, uh, on, on broadcast duties, never on commentary, and I put my camera on Chris Rosenkrantz, I always think to myself, uh, where is Gildestern, which is a... Uh, Terrible pun that assumes you have watched the movie or read the Hamlet, uh, Sam. So I don't know if you know it. Who Rosenkrantz, so maybe? Uh, Rosenkrantz and Gilda Stern are, are dead as the Rosenkrantz kills someone now. There is a movie <laughs> called, called Rosen, Ro, Rosenkrantz and Gilda Stern are dead, which is a, a I've absurd, never heard a, of it. A, an absurdist comedy with Tim Roth, by the way, uh, about these two. I like Tim Roth very minor characters of the Hamlet uh, and reflect on the absurdity of their lives, especially considering that they are characters in a story, so no matter what they do, the story is always going to pan out the same. That, that sounds excellent, I must and say. I may have to give that a watch tonight, actually, so uh, thanks for that, Mark. I think Rosenkrantz yes. is spelled a bit different than this. Yes, is is spelled... Uh, Rosenkrantz with a C instead of a K, but uh, yeah. 
It, it's um, it's it's one one of the best tangents will go on <laughs> in this uh, in this broadcast. So, uh, you viewers, that's going to be the peak of it. As qualifying is over, there weren't too many improvements near the end. I think Beer may have improved to uh, to sixth position, just ahead of uh, the top amateur drivers. But here is the grid, and it's quite a spread out one. But um, well. It'll all be just a close, uh, at least on the start, as they always are. Marteau on pole, who did win race one, I believe, at this circuit last season. Didn't win race two. Redford managed to catch him from outside the top ten. I remember that. Um, but Marteau, um, yeah, he's good around this circuit. Showing that by that qualifying time. Uh, Westerhoff, uh, first qualifying of the season, up there in second place. How he has been missed, of course, very competitive last season as well. Then it's uh, Niels uh, Eric Isaacson in third championship leader Tobias Olsen in fourth then it's Thomas Torp who's been ex uh, very quick this season not necessarily been very lucky though in the race ones then it's uh, Florian Beer uh, Justin Negretti and Christian Hendon are the top two amateur drivers Hendon in his first ever Apex Racing League event then it's Kettle Larson Mats Kestrum Bakken uh, Alexander Skeret Chuck Mauro Lines up in 12th, then it's Chris Rosenkrantz, Christian Glamsetter, who is the championship lead leader in the amateurs. Then it's Ricard Boberg, Georgie Zuayen, watch out for Georgie, you'll be getting a lot of places, I imagine. Tiago Reiser, Philip Russell, Kimbrali Charney, uh, Ingo Schnell, uh, Andres Helgerud, Nicholas Reilly lines up in 22nd place. Now, there are a couple of drivers that serve pit lane starts, but I'm not sure if either of them are around tonight, so I might be able to actually advance this grinning period fairly quick because we've just got Olsen, who I'm sure will be taking the grid for this race as we see the conditions, 19 degrees track temperatures, very similar conditions to what the Jars would have been experiencing in the official series this week. So um, yeah, n really no worries for them whatsoever. The track will be nicely rubbered in after two hours of practice and a bit of uh, qualifying as well. And so these F3 cars should really be on rails and boy, they are going to need to be on this very tricky street circuit. Zuayin, in fact, is not going to take the start, but everyone else is ready. The lights are coming on for round three of the championship and away we launch. It's a fairly even start from the top two. It's a dreadful start for Isaacson to drop way down the order straight away. Can Westerhoff try to get past his fellow countrymen heading into turn one? They are leaving space, are the two Dutch drivers, but they are in the end state in the same direction as Beer does spin round from sixth position on the grid. So disappointing news for him. Torp is dropping down and the man who's had, oh, oh and Marteau, is Marteau going to hit the wall there? I think he may have done. He was certainly all over the place and if he has avoided the wall, then he is a very lucky boy. But he has lost the lead and crucially Olsen the championship leader moving up into second position there was contact going on behind as well Russell's had a superb start the two amateur dress of Negretti and Hendon up in fourth and fifth position and that just all seems to be mistakes on the cold tires honestly Marco yeah, we know cold tires, despite these cars having tire warmers are still uh, very 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 deadly and uh, uh, it seems like Marto's car is okay, so just a mistake, just a moment. Uh, we'll wait a second before going to grab the replay, as the cars are stretching their legs finally after the very twisty uh, start of the race into the back stretch. And here we go with Westerhoff, Olson in the draft of each other. Marto following closely, but uh, he's not uh, getting a shot at the two leaders. He needs to look behind because just in the gravity, the uh, uh, amateur leader is following. Uh, oh no, he's around! Oh, man, I jinxed him massively. Apologies. See this? this is why we took you off commentary, Marco. Eh? Um, <laughs> you're proving our point. Negretti, and he has been by far and away the fastest amateur driver this season, but, uh, well, too bad thinking the other races hasn't necessarily been his fault, but that one was his fault. Rosenkrantz is now dropping down the order, the pro driver. He's back on his way, and that looks like another self-spin. I mean, it could have been contact. Russell, after a poor oh, qualifying, time, he's all the way up there as Marteau has spun it again. Now, has he missed the wall again? I think he has, but he's dropping places very quickly. And this start to this uh, Montreal race, uh, race uh, six of the season, round three, he has got off to a crazy start. And Marteau really hating that corner because it's a very similar thing to what he did in lap one. Yeah, trying to get uh, the replay of lap one. And here we go. So we'll see it from Marteau's perspective. This is the 
quickest way for us to go and catch exactly what happened at that uh, particular junction of the race. So Marteau takes the first corner, everything okay. So you still in the... Oh, I mean, the, the launch sounded very good, no wheel spin. Had the uh, curves up nice and high, it was a fantastic start from West Hill. You can see how the bug cleared the top there. And then here was a mistake, so it actually was actually on the first curve and uh, wow. I mean, you were saying at the start, Marco, okay, if you make mistakes around this circuit, you're going to know about it. Uh, well, Marte has uh, somehow gone against that um, as uh, one must have just went a bit wide. Yeah, incredibly, incredibly good and lucky, you know, because uh, if you spin there, usually you hit the wall, but if you spin there twice, uh, you know. Oh, Marto is off again! He made another mistake. Huh? Probably just went deep at the uh, at the end of the front stretch. So let's see the replay. So this is the uh, 107 of Gestion back in just ahead. Seems Probably a false right positive. For, uh, Apologies for that. As it's very close for the lead here, Olsen all over the back of Westhold. They've got a nice gap now to Hendon behind to. Uh, Probably won't be catching them particularly quickly, so they, this is pretty much a duel for the lead. It's a 25 minute race, a long way to go, but with Marte eight seconds back and Kushi with cars to overtake, this race has massively opened up for Wilson, who was half a second behind Marte in qualifying, and yet this race win, one win, could be very simple for him if he can make this move. As Westerhoff defends up the inside, Olsen has fantastic straight line speed, it looks like, but Westerhoff's doing what he needs. Has he outbroken himself though? He's all over the curves, and it's a poor exit for him. Now this corner is much more tricky to defend into because the outside and the inside can work, and it's advantage to buy at Olsen now. He's got the inside for the first proper corner of the lap, but West is not giving up deep on the brakes. Olsen's deep on the brakes. I think he's gone a bit too far there. Out wide, not too many marbles at this stage of the race, so he didn't lose too much grip, but he can't get the move stuck. So Olsen pretty much had that one wrapped up there, but just uh, not quite uh, getting the, the lines right through the first couple of corners. Westerhoff, uh, Westerhoff, apologies, a privateer, and uh, Olsen, of course, uh, representing uh, NHR. Very long standing team. Then it's a trio of IGL coatings uh, cars uh, Christian Handen, Ketil Larsen, and Nils uh, Isaacsen. As in the back, uh, see a slow Richard Bobberg, and in front of him, his teammate Christian Glamsetter trying to go for a move on Chuck Mauro and making it very easy. Bit deep on the brakes there, hitting the curb. Leaving to tell the tale, so Richard Boberg down to 40 class and he has massive, uh, no, he has damage uh, on the front right of his front wing. And so probably I would uh, guess... Uh, oh! oh no. That is Riser and uh, Schnell. And they are merged with one another. Well, I think that was just a tangle of wheels and you could, you could see it happening because Schnell was... Uh, Late on the brakes, trying to see, or what? Well, well, not he wasn't late on the brakes. To, I mean, he wasn't late on the brakes. Um, but uh, he was just trying to avoid one car, and unfortunately, piled into Riser, who's in his first ever race in Apex Racing League history. Um, so shame start for him. And of course, that will cost him a good place as well for race two, as Mauro is having to go defensive here against Beer Beer. Forcing his way through those first couple of corners here, once you're absolutely to that outside line into the. Uh, First, uh, first 90 degree corner worked so well, and um, he managed to pull that one off. So it wasn't a good start for Beer, but he's back to 10th position. He was pretty much dead last, I'll say, after the first couple of corners. Mario just behind Zouai and started from the pit lane. So he's really done very well. And uh, Glamsetter is uh, third place out of the amps as he's at the back of this train. As oh, Helgerud has uh, just gone for second, seems. Yeah. As uh, we are, so he's missing uh, important bits of his car. Is Andrea Selgerud? He had a spin on uh, lap one as well. So uh, it's like, oh, is it with the lapped car? No, no, nah, it was by himself. 
just uh, well he at least hit the napa uh, auto repair uh, banner so maybe they will gift him uh, some free repairs sorry pieces de tout, because we are in uh, french canada as they say in south park french canada is the real canada apparently i don't uh, subscribe to this uh, idea <laughs> It's French Canada, of course. <laughs> I love Canada. Uh, as you know, I'm a massive fan of ice hockey and maple syrup. Well, um, well, unfortunately, we don't have Connor Bell out on circuit. Uh, he very nearly won the title last season in this championship, but uh, he uh, he resided in uh, in his parts of the world. Uh, I think English, uh, Canada, but uh, still. Yeah, representing his nation very well. So I get a very swim around this place, but to get a few across the season. Olsen trying to uh, follow in his footsteps. Uh, they've uh, kind of just cooled this battle down for a little bit, but we've got a long way to go. It's only a third of the way through this race. And uh, Olsen is going for his uh, best attack for uh, quite a while. It's top, uh, just knows what to do for the chicane. It's impossible to go around the outside. It's all about just keeping your composure, though, as the driver ahead. Don't go in too deep there. Don't get scared away into the chicane because then you can get a poor exit from it and be vulnerable hanging into turn one. But uh, Olsen just lacking again. But the good news for Olsen is that that car looks very racy, Marco, because he is gaining a lot of time down the straight. So obviously, a lot of that due to the uh, draft, but I, I think um, maybe a little bit less wing as well on that Swedish car. Marto keeps on pounding the fastest lap of the race. Second lap in a row, he has done that. As some lap traffic is in front of our leaders. In the meantime, Marto has put Isaacsen in his, uh, 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 on his radar. Sliding there, that, that, that piece of tarmac there, incredibly slippery. Here we go on the inside, here comes Marteau. And he should be able to complete the pass. Yes, he does. So up into fifth place as we go back to our uh, leaders. As the lap traffic moves out of the way, that should be Elgerud. Which we just saw earlier missing his nose. And now he has disappeared. And that was... Uh, ah, he just... Oh, okay, he, he's watching the race. Perfect. <laughs> well, isn't that how you did the broadcast in uh, was it Assetto Corsa? Oh, uh, okay. Position cars like that around the track. I, I, I have uh, never tainted myself by doing an Assetto Corsa broadcast. Um, let's 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 be you know let's be clear. But yes, that that is how they broadcasted the Italian Esports Championship. The year they did it with both Assetto Corsa and iRacing. That was the Assetto Corsa way of broadcasting things. Whilst, of course, for iRacing, I convinced the organizers to use SDK Gaming. Let's say that they are not doing a set of course anymore. Well, yeah, once you see the light, difficult to, uh, difficult to go back. It is, uh, yeah, credit to iRacing, credit to G. The uh, uh, broadcast capabilities are absolutely terrific. We can adjust all the camera settings so we can get this lovely shoulder cam of, uh, of Tobias Olsen. Um, all eyes ahead. So uh, West Hob up to five seconds now back to Hender Marteau up to fifth position as I'm sure you've seen he's actually maintained the gap to these top two and is well on course for a podium so damage limitation really for Marteau and uh, might play into these guys minds. West Hob without too much to lose this is his first race of the season as Olsen was very close to the back of him, and once again, this is looking very good for the Swedish driver. He should be able to at least get him so, get uh, Westhoff offline. But uh, man, it's such a such a weird circuit. Is this once your track? It's uh, such a single file chicane that even if you do get the other driver offline, Westhoff should still be able to get a good run. But he has run deep a little bit, uh, like he did earlier on. He's trying to cover off the inside line, but it's an excellent exit for uh, Olsen. And this is similar to the opportunity he had many laps ago. Last time he was too cautious on the brakes heading into turn one. I think he's too cautious on the brakes as well because Westerhoff just nips back up the inside and he is back through again. So Olsen doing everything he needs to do down the back straight alongside the uh, the old rowing lake and of course through the chicane. But um, yeah, just needs to get his elbows out in turn one, I think, Marco. 
Absolutely. By the way, I forgot that we have the technology, so we can use it of uh, showing you, you know, the uh, reverse grid for race two in real time. Highlighted in a lovely, uh, that is not blue, that is light blue, sky blue, I would say. Some more traffic for the leaders. This time it is the uh, 226 of Thiago Reiser, who was unfortunately involved in the crash earlier. By the way, my knowledge of German is very limited, but Reiser should mean traveler. Any German speakers in the chat, please uh, feel free to correct me. Uh, the class. I love it when we can make puns out of a, uh, a drug's name in the season. And, uh... That might just be one, because there's not a whole lot, honestly, um, up and down this order. But, um, yeah, we'll see. As, uh, well, that's an excellent chicane there from Westhoff. So tricky in these Formula 3 cars in particular. Any car that's uh, by chicane is one of the most tricky corners you're ever going to have to negotiate in, uh, in sim racing uh, with the curbs that, um, that we have. And in different cars, you've got to take a different amount of curb, of course, also not get uh, too much curb so that you... Uh, get a slow down but uh, man these guys are so proficient so many laps uh, set such a high level of driving that they can absolutely ace it almost every single time and also through that uh, second chicane as well really shaving the walls every time last and not running quite as close in uh, fourth position but what an amazing job Hendon is doing I mean um, I I'm, I'm struggling to think of a time marker where we've had a amateur driver get a podium on their debut I mean, it's rare for a pro driver to get a, a, a podium on their debut, but, well, I don't think Hendon will, will hang on to it, honestly, but uh, this is some, perform some, some performance. I remember we had, we had a debut podium in uh, prototypes once on the amateur, and then the driver got bumped to pro the next race. <laughs> well, that is the disadvantage of doing well. <laughs> the organisers will think, uh, maybe, mate. It's time to promote you up. That's happened a few times, and the driver hasn't got a podium for the rest of the season. So, um, yeah, um, sometimes, uh, sometimes even the admins gets it wrong. But you can see how far ahead he is of the other amateurs, Hendon, uh, with the uh, red stripe well ahead of Russell. Marto, see you. You know, Sam, the, the final chicane, uh, at least in the past few years, seemed like uh, a bit more of a, of a of an overtake spot, but uh, not not this year. Like it yeah, seems like they can. They, it seems like they, despite being in a draft, uh, they they can't get that much overspeed uh, to be safely in front of the car to complete the pass. So, and of course they see that if if they are too close there. Uh, that is, uh, as you were saying earlier, very narrow for a chicane. So usually if you hit the curb, you are getting the set into the wall on the right. Ah, this might be an opportunity though for uh, Mate. This is another one where it's very much single file. Oh, that oh, would be very risky. Wow, 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 wow. Come on, Keith. You've got uh, plenty of time, mate. And uh, wow, he, he, he broke later. When, when, you're, when you're about half a car's length, behind another driver and you're breaking late in them into calling that's usually quite a bad sign but somehow did not take Larson out of the race but uh, heck if he was uh, one of these guys was based in Australia I think that would have been game over for one or both uh, Beer just moving past Russell by the way but I think I'm gonna have to watch Marte pull off this move on Larson see if he can get that overspeed that you're talking about Marco uh, heading into the chicane and get the move stuck but it doesn't seem as though Marte has been able to uh, to accomplish uh, that one, as we see the mistake yeah. actually for uh, for Russell, uh, why he dropped that place as uh, Marte still trying to uh, make this one work. We've seen this outside line work very well so far, but Marte a bit more aggressive than what we saw Olsen earlier on. Despite a lockup, he just has so much more overspeed and is eventually up to fourth position. There he goes and can uh, set his sights now on Hendon, who has quietly just opened up that gap again up to 1.8 seconds. Yeah, making the most out of the battle there between uh, Marteau and, and, and Larsen. So this is not the replay I asked for. It, you know, it's the, it's the summer also for STK Gaming sometimes. Y you see, uh, I was watching the weather and uh, next week uh, we are expecting to have days with 37 and 38 degrees. 
Wow. Okay, can I come to Norfolk, please? Come, come stay. Come stay, Marco. <laughs> I mean, your bed's, your bed's welcome. It's, um, yeah, we'd, we'd love to have you and your cuisine <laughs> around. Bring your mum as well. <laughs> and, uh, we can have some, uh, some very nice food um, over those 11 days. Um, and then, uh, it's remarkable the amount of back markers that we've uh, had to deal with so far. But uh, Hendon uh, still with 1.5 seconds ahead, but you can just see on the timing tower and maybe even just visually as well that gap just coming down little by little to Marte. You uh, should catch with a couple of laps remaining that time round, pretty much matching, but of course that did involve an overtake on Larson. Um, quick shout out to Apex Racing Academy for sponsoring this series, being the title sponsor, one of the title sponsors for this championship actually. Um, Apex Racing Academy with 29 data packs, uh, one of them is for the Delara F3 car. In fact, many of the drivers in this series, well all the drivers get in this series, get a uh, free uh, one month subscription to Apex Racing Academy to get the setups for this Formula 3 car. And um, I mean, I can certainly attest to um, them being absolutely superb. You're really not going to get better setups anywhere else. Some of the best drivers, Kevin Ellis, Peter Bayman, world championship level drivers designing the setups, do, doing track tutorials as well. And they can also give you one-on-one -on -one or group coaching as well to uh, really, nail, really nail down where to improve your iRacing performance. Also, their setup sync technology makes uh, everything that everything to do with the setups that much more easy. So do check out um, apexracingac.com so you get this on a, uh, a bronze, silver or even a gold membership as we see what happened to Gumbwali Charney because he's had to tow back to the pits after this. Uh, he was fighting with Thiago Reiser and this time was Thiago being uh, the panther instead of the panted. And uh, off uh, went Camboali, unfortunately, as Chris Rosenkrantz goes past uh, Mats Kestrum-Bakken, up into 7th uh, for uh, the 289. Nothing changing at the front right now, still one second between Vesterov and Olsson. And then uh, seven tenths of a second over Marteau as we get to the final uh, five minutes of this race as there is a battle for the podium in amateur class. Yeah, this is uh, Negretti on the comeback as he takes way oh. too much curve. And now he takes his second spin of the day, Negretti. Well, I, I still think he's a huge favorite for the amateur sites or just like that. Uh, he's, he's not making it, making it easy for himself. Uh, right now and uh, well he was already going in very diagonally into that corner and then actually it was the contact on the car head you can see the damage on the front wing and that kind of unsettled the car so really uh, disappointing drive for Justin otherwise I think he we, we would have been around Hendon um, could have well had a podium honestly in this race and for the Amazon drivers and uh, that doesn't come around too often so he'll be kicking himself uh, four minutes to go in this race we're going to have three more laps to go after this one and uh, this is quite a tall order for Christian Hendon. Good news for Christian is that uh, at least down that uh, straight, they had excellent straight line speed. So you can get some good exits from these corners and you should be in good stead. Uh, but Marto is just that bit too quick. And it does seem like Hendon is losing a bit through that final chicane. And this will be fairly easy for the defending champion to go up the inside into turn one. No response from the debutante. And Marte moves to third position. It's not the race win, which uh, really we thought was in the bag, honestly, after the first half lap. But um, it's still uh, a, a decent podium, a decent point all. Yeah, good move from Marto. And his fan club in the chat uh, will be happy. He will start... Uh, uh, oh! Oh, wow! Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, has uh, Marte got damage from that one? That was uh, head. I think I'll break himself there, Marco. I, I'm honest, I was uh, having uh, like a chameleon, one eye on the screen, one eye on the timing tower uh, and I heard the uh, racing bang, uh, you know, traditional sound uh, and, said, and then I saw both cars in the grass, uh, so we left to go through to a replay and, and see what happened. And now he's around his teammates, so his IGL coating is 456 still, as uh, I mean, I don't think this was a move from Hendon, let's see. Oh yeah, messed up big time with that breaking. Very fortunate that it was wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. 
And so now uh, Larsen is in fourth. Uh, Isaacson is about to go past uh, maybe his teammate. Let's see. Uh, not yet, as uh, he's getting. It was one second between the two leaders uh, a few laps ago. But look now at the time delta, which is broken. <laughs> and <laughs> look at the, I, I meant look at the lifetime comparison, and you can see that. Uh, Olsen, uh, Olsen is, is closing in uh, quite quickly. Yeah, and he's, he's got, well, return one's the big opportunity, isn't it? But last lap, 10 seconds clear of the others. If you're going to go for a move on the, on the outside into the final chicane, this is the uh, time. So, apologies, we've still got one more lap to go after this one, don't we? So, my bad. Um, so, uh, they've still got, uh, yeah, still got time to line it up into... Uh, turn one he's not quite as close as what he'd like to be that gap coming down just with the uh draft effect but yeah just losing a bit of time on this time round driving in deep for the hairpin and does gain about a tenth of a second it's only half a tenth of a second at least it's all just lining it up marco for that one last attempt and he goes to the final lap Incredibly similar in pace in this lap uh, when you lose uh, one tenth of a second and three one thousandths is, is nothing. So, absolutely, you are right. Just getting it uh, set up for the final lap. We should see Barney somewhere. No, he has been sacked. Uh, so, no Barney, but we can assure you it's the final lap of the race. We replaced him with an Android or something. Uh, but the drivers will know that it's the last lap. They'll see it from the timer. They'll see the uh, white flag in sim as well. Ten seconds clear of Marte. And also wasn't able to get it done. He looked very racy across the uh, start-finish line. And this could be an opportunity. And maybe a mugging would be his best chance from here on in. Olsen, he's running out of corners though. That's a bit wide for West Hoppy. Gets terrific drive. And this has been a, an amazing drive for him. Uh, Stephen Westhoff, he hasn't driven all season long and I'm not even sure if he's ever won a race in this series in fact but he came back, got second place in qualifying and he's oh! just three corners away from the race win as Olsen sliding about. Westhoff was slightly offline as well. He's going to have to go defensive into the hairpin. They've got the 272 just ahead. He could oh, well play a part in this one as there's contact between the two of them and that is going to significantly help Stephen Westerhoff because it really held up Olsen. Talk about stopping it on the apex. That was that and uh, and some more but I think Olsen's struggling down the straight because the gap is coming down considerably and I wonder if there's a little bit of damage on that car and this is enabling the Swedish driver to come back. He's going to go round the outside. Can he make this move work? Or can Westerhoff come back into the final corner there alongside? Westerhoff does hang on. It's still a run to the line because Westerhoff's got no straight line speed whatsoever. He's but he will up. hang on to the race win as he crabs across the line. You're absolutely right, Mark K. But he had just enough. And thank goodness that was the last lap as well because that car would have been a, handle, a handful to manage near the end. Hendon wins in the amateur category on his debut ahead of Isaacson who gets the reverse grid pole. Uh, could we quickly see that replay of the hairpin marker before unfortunately lose the uh, replay as uh, we do of course. Um, but uh, man, I, I, yeah I thought it was advantage to, uh, to Westerhoff there but uh, man to, to deal with that car crabbing in the final chicane that was a great effort. It's going to be a bit of a struggle to find the exact moment. Uh, but uh, and I think we can't, uh, but you can see the crab. Look at that. So probably he got it in the, when he got it in the right rear, it broke the suspension. But he was still able to hang on. I mean, look at that car. You can see it right now quite clearly. I had this idea on the back stretch that he was crabbing, but I thought, you know, maybe it's the shadows, the angle of the camera. No, he was crabbing, and uh, if we ever were going to find the replay, well. Now we can't. No, but, uh, yeah, put, <laughs> petition to iRacing to allow that feature. So, what were you going to say, Mark? Yeah, no, that at least we have the results. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there they are. Mr. Hobb at the top. Congrats to him. That's a very nice race win. Um, and uh, yeah, beats Tobias Olsen, who extends his championship lead. Kitiaga Mate <laughs> started from pole, but uh, had two self spins and a contact. 
So to get a podium, I think it was fairly good for him. Kettle Larson was in fourth place. In it was Christian Hendon, uh, making it a very good day for IGL Coatings with uh, his teammate Isaacson just behind. Rosenkrantz narrowly misses out on the reverse grid ahead of Gestrin Batkin, Beer and Mario. Philip Russell was to, uh, to, uh, second place out of the amateur drivers and he's going to be fairly close to the amateur summit actually because he beat his uh, championship rivals Christian Glamsetter and Justin Negretti there. Uh, Alexander Scaret was in 14th place overall. Then it was Ricard Boberg, Ingo Schnell, uh, Thiago uh, Reiser, Nicholas Riley, Andreas Helgerud were all one lap down, so they will score points, but the retirements were Chani, Zuayen, Torp and Rasmussen. Uh, we are going to show you a quick trailer for one of the sponsors of this broadcast very quickly, but we'll be back with you very soon on Apex Racing TV. Welcome back to the Apex Racing Academy Formula 3 Virtual Racing School Super Series live on Apex Racing TV. You just watched a trailer for SDK Gaming and a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this broadcast because SDK Gaming are providing our terrific overlay. You can see the uh, kind of race info panels uh, up on screen at the moment but of course during the races we have the timing uh, tower open, we have the battle boxes, we have all kinds of uh, kind of uh, lap comparison uh, uh, graphs and of course you can make it look pretty much however you like it. Uh, if you know a bit of CSS you can literally make it look however you want and there's some terrific templates as well. I mean we have uh, this kind of kind of Formula 1 2017 type overlay but so uh, you can also have NASCAR, you can have the terrific Formula 3.5 overlay from uh, many years ago but we actually uh, use that for a broadcast which will be happening later on on Apex Racing TV and it's uh, very much it's kind of retro uh, that one and uh, yeah it's uh, some terrific uh, kit can be used for broadcast streaming and also has a heads up display as well um, and of course terrific for live timing as well um, so big thanks to sdkgaming.co.uk and uh, yeah do check them out uh, currently just at the end of our warm up and we've just got a few more seconds to go. We're about to see the grid for this one, Marco, with the top six inverted. Uh, do you think Marto will be more eager to win this race too after his mistakes in race one? Well, certainly he has, uh, I think he has learned from his mistakes in, in race one because he knows that they cost him big. He finished third uh, despite those two big, big, and, and he also, you know, needs to consider himself lucky because as I was saying earlier, two mistakes like that, usually only one, is necessary to kick you out of a race uh, with big damage. So I think he'll try to go first uh, 
as soon as possible, but without taking uh, unnecessary risks. Yeah, definitely. Um, Isaacson uh, on the pole position for you, so he's going to have to deal with Hendon in second place and Kettle Larson in third. So it's an IGL coatings e racing one, two, three, and you wonder what tactics those three could use in order to win this race. Then it's Marte, Olsen, uh, the two championship contenders, and Westerhoff race one winner in sixth place behind that. So Raising Krantz, Gestrin back and Beer and Mario rounding out the top ten. There's all the amateurs, a few of the pros as well. Uh, Torp and, uh, well, unfortunately, I don't think Torp's going to take the start. I'd love him too, but uh, honestly, the guy's been <laughs> so, so unlucky this season, particularly Hockenheim. He was uh, wiped out of the race through no fault of his own, and I uh, don't think he had too much to do with this race one instant either. So the lights are out, and race two of the evening is away. Isaacson leading Hendon to turn one. In fact, it's a terrific start for Hendon, but Isaacson just taking that position as a Westerhoff storming through the middle. He's up to third position is the race one winner. He got a fantastic start in race one, and he's got the start that he needed in this race too as well as Isaacson races away from the rest of the field. The IGL Coatings cars may trip over one another, but Westerhoff just has to settle in behind. Marteau drops behind Olsen, crucially, so Marteau really going for maybe the favour for this race win to sixth position, and Westerhoff getting past the last and he nearly managed to get done for the first couple of corners he has finally been able to do it this time russell with a good start charney also with a good start to move from 20th to 17th but it's all going on out in the leaders olsen trying to get larson these top three from race one really probably oh. seem to have the edge on the igl coatings car they run wide to does olsen but he's just about got through it without a slowdown i believe but he still having to go to Benson. Incredible that we haven't talked about the slowdowns, uh, but because usually they are so prominent around here, especially there at the chicane we just went past, and you pay them dearly, especially in the beginning of the race. Seems like uh, Olson uh, got away with that uh, as Marteau is trying to make a comeback. Yeah, he's got the inside line, but he hasn't got the draft, and I think Marteau, at least from eyeballing, it seems to be running more drag than some of these other cars. It's the straight line sweep speed for the 146 and we do see a move on the outside into the chicane and just ahead as well Hendon versus Westhoff and has Hendon got a slow down there uh yes he does he, he's losing a lot of time and that's going to lose him I mean he, he's going to be down to about 10th position after this one just hope he gets out of the way of these guys safely because there's really no point in even trying to hold on to them uh Westhoff then into third Olsen did get past Larson uh, eventually albeit Larson put up a terrific fight out there oh, oh in the Olsen's wall is also in the wall now. he's tapped the wall has he got away with that one still Westerhoff in fact has now got a slowdown so Westerhoff race one winner he was storming through the order but he's now picked up a slowdown and that's going to send him way down the order so it's really helped up Marteau there and with Olsen potentially with damage all of a sudden Marteau maybe becomes the favourite again it's all happening three wide on the back stretch be careful Oh, West Hove round and beer round and that's a car in the middle of the circuit. Joe's trying to make it their way round but they were trying to react and there's a separate incident as well just behind. Well, it was a very clean race one and there wasn't much more uh, reason to have a, a nasty race two honestly but uh, well, we've seen a, a few cars with big damage then we've got three wide again now. This is Negretti storming through the order and there's nearly contact again front wing to, um, to, to, to uh, rear tyre. And that's Chuck Mauro storming through, but Negretti now to second place out of the outers, long way behind Hendon, of course. But uh, man, that was a very chaotic chicane right there, Marco. Yeah, and you were right, two separate crashes there. And usually the second crash is done because the drivers uh, are distracted by the first one. Here we go with uh, Mauro on the outside, on the inside is Negretti, the, the second place car uh, in the amateur class, very wide goes the American and the other American, of course, gets the position up to P8 is Chuck Mauro right now. set his sights in the cars ahead although he's 10 seconds behind look at that between oh it's Reisner, uh, Reisner and Schnell those two coming together in race one Schnell crashing into Reiser that time Reiser didn't seem to uh, or seem to be or seem to remember that incident because he was very tough on the uh, exit of, uh, of turn two um, but crucially the Swiss driver on his first ever Apex Racing League event up to 13 there's the top three all closing in a while now that Hendon uh, to be fair actually maintaining the gap to Isaacson but Olsen closing 
uh, by about a tenth and a half on the race leader that last tour of the circuit and uh, well, well do you think they'll help do you think they'll use Hendon to hold up Olsen here do you think Hendon would have got that message um, I mean we, we, I, I don't think so you know I, I think that you know uh, maybe we have something here brewing at the back again with Vesterov and uh, Alexander Skaret uh, bit early in the race still 25 minutes by the way just like race one so we'll see how the things will develop oh and a spin for Skaret that went on a top didn't it that was incredible he barely turned the wheel before yeah. it was spinning around as uh, the number uh, 188 gets back into the pointing the right way Nils Erik Isaksen has got one second uh, point three over Christian Hendon Tobias Olson is in uh, third and uh, Thiago Marteau sitting in uh, fourth place Larsen in fifth, Rosenkranz in sixth, Gestern back in seventh, Mar uh, Mauro in, uh, in eighth, and the first uh, amateur, the second amateur, sorry, is Justin Negretti in front of Christian Glamsetter. As uh, Glamsetter's just uh, cutting the grass there, so that'll be a bit of a slowdown. Um, wonder, Mark, hey, as the uh, yeah, CV player, what happened to really? I wonder if we could see. Uh, whilst we have a few gaps between the leads, what happened at that chicane, particularly the second incident, um, as, uh, well, uh, we, I think Fisichella crashed a bit like that uh, back in 08. Uh, was it uh, C-Till? I think it was a spiker, not quite sure. Um, but, uh, yes, uh, as I, unfortunately, I can't see this one, Mikey. Yeah, especially because it was a uh, wrong, wrong replay, but they were three wide. And contact between Westerhoff and Beer. Beer uh, speeds across the track. And then there is another crash there in the back between. Uh, that was uh, Richard Boberg, probably. Yes, it was. Uh. So let's see. Boberg is coming to the crime scene. He's been followed. Oh, he spins on his own. There we go. And then he parks in the general position uh, of the other cars. He was under pressure from... Uh, I th think it was... Uh, well, a white car. I, I will, uh, you know, realize who, who, who he was later. Ah, Nicolas Ryan, of course. None of the ones I said. <laughs> Went down half the order there. Um, but uh, no, there was some great evasive action um, from uh, some of the drivers. They really had spread. Henton has had a problem. What has happened to Henton? Or has he just lost two places in quick succession? It yes. Might be the yeah. latter. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't really lost any time to Isaacson. Maybe a little bit of time. But uh, yeah, Henton down to fourth. He couldn't really hold them up for very long there. No, this time uh, he, he, he wasn't able, and uh, so for Marteau and Olson uh, now it's off to the races, uh, trying to catch the leader. As you can see, despite the overtake, uh, Marteau was still fast, uh, faster uh, than Isaacson and fastest overall. And now he has, uh, you know, maybe if he's able to, if, if he sees that uh, himself and Olson can have similar pace, uh, maybe they can work together uh, and go and grab... Uh, uh, the lead. This is the beauty when you have three different drivers from three different teams at the front. They will be, you know, it would be different, of course, if we had, you know, first and second from one team and third from another. But, you know, this is a 1v1v1. So, uh, you know, you can have these uh, temporary alliances, so to speak, Sam, maybe to go and close the, the gap to the leader. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... Cosmato will be wanting to, to beat uh, Olsen as well for the, uh, for the championship and, and the other way around. But yeah, they, they'll be looking to that race win as a possibility. Because um, last season we had half an hour long race twos. I think that five minutes uh, less, uh, Isaacson should, uh, should take comfort in. Uh, because it's a little bit less time. He has got excellent pace to be fair, has Isaacson. Really been putting in some very strong lap times. Didn't seem too quick in race one, honestly. But... Uh, much better in this uh, race two, Olsen uh, with that slow lap. And I think Hendon as well, there must have been something that went on between Olsen and Hendon because they did lose a lot of time, Hendon, uh, about three seconds 
or two seconds off his uh, normal pace. What's the time difference this time? Four tenths. So if they keep on catching by that rate, they're going to be there in uh, in about five laps time. And that's uh, going to be with about seven and a half minutes of the race to go, maybe even eight minutes of the race to go. So uh, that's kind of the target for them. So if Isaacson's got any more pace up his sleeve, he really needs to deliver it now, but I'm sure he's kind of been going flat out from the start. See now, fastest lap of the race uh, was set by Steven Gwesterov down into uh, 11th place. As uh, Negreti went past Mauro, Mauro trying to come back. But with little success. And actually, Glam Setter been overtaken by Westeroff himself. So, Westeroff up to 10th. And now it's Boberg uh, in 12th. And, and of course, Glam Setter in 11th. Thanks to Wolf Racing Studios for subscribing to our channel. By the way, as we see this attack from uh, Justin Negretti, fr sorry, from Mauro and Justin Negretti. Let me send uh, big, big birthday wishes to Austin Knight. It's his birthday today, so happy birthday, Austin. Yep, happy birthday, Austin. Uh, so you got a very nice Max Verstappen uh, jumper or sweater um, or shirt. Well, I think it was a shirt, actually, but it's uh, very stylish. And um, yeah, I'm sure some of the uh, Dutch drivers out there on Cycle would uh, certainly agree with him. But no, um, big thanks to, uh, to Austin for uh, for being one of the um, one of the best commentators on uh, on Apex Racing TV. He's really not saying much, but um, Austin does certainly uh, yeah put himself um, up there. I'm sure the 3.5 community will be uh, hosting a, a birthday party for him. Honestly, tonight, uh, Mark, I'm sure. You're uh, going to have to mention that quite a few times. He does go down in legend in that community. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, by the way, we'll be at Zandvoort in that Formula 3.5, so a bit of a preview of what uh, we can have in a few weeks in F1. Don't miss that. It's a bit late for everyone and early for the Australians uh, at uh, 21.45 GMT. But, you know, it's summer, so, you know, you, you can stay up a bit more than usual. Olsen with a uh, bit of a pull up in that time, around a 30.8. He lost eight tenths to the leaders. Just wonder if he's maybe got some damage, but that seems fine. Maybe this lap time will be a bit better for him. But uh, yeah, man, that's that's a dreadful lap time. That's a second slower than what we'd expect. Look at that, he's gone from, well, well, yeah, so he's gone from a 29.6 to a 30.8. Um, from one lap to the next. This time it's back into the 29. So yeah, another mistake there for Olsen. That's kind of halted his progress by a lap or two and all of a sudden that eight minutes that, he had, that it, it looked like he was going to catch with time to spare uh, all of a sudden now he's uh, going to do well to catch up at all because uh, that's over three seconds as Mauro is getting past Negretti they didn't think there was any tap there but managing to force his arrival wide and Negretti cannot respond against that one look at Westerhoff as well uh, slaloming that car around this uh, course and makes up a few car lengths on them in, uh, in a braking zone. And here he goes up the inside, and that's into ninth position now for Stephen West. You know, Sam, uh, unless, uh, unless uh, um, Marteau is uh, attacking Olsen, uh, so if, if they're battling, that would explain uh, the, the slow pace because I'm not seeing anything. Uh, uh, on, as Mauro goes around, I'm not seeing anything on the event view. Oh, that was a bit of a risky rejoin everyone survived apparently because I'm not seeing on the on the on the event viewer here on, on our screen the production screen any off track or mistakes from from Olson so and look how close Marteau is so Marteau I think doesn't care about the victory at this point he just cares about beating Olson on the racetrack and getting more points than him at the end of the day great lap for Isaacson 29.7, best lap of the race. That's two tenths faster than what he's been doing on the most part. Good lap there for Olsen, 29.6. Uh, but, um, wow, if Isaacson keeps lapping at that pace, no one's going to catch him. This is terrific from the Norwegian driver going for his first ever win in Apex Racing League history as Westerhoff, as we expected, passed Negretti. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a gap now back to the... Uh, 
Next amateur driver of uh, Glam Setzer. Probably going to be quite a boring race, honestly, for the American from now to the end. Uh, I wonder if you could ride on boards, Marco, with Marteau, just see kind of if he is able to gain uh, pace um, down the uh, back straight. Because uh, to me, it looks like Marteau is running more drag. I, I felt that kind of throughout tonight. Um, and uh, that's going to make overtaking very tricky. stream range but um, yeah he, he's certainly not got better straight line speed uh, it's either neutral or um, or slightly worse as the gap does come down so this is the first lap in a while that they've actually been able to take really any time out um, and it was another good lap there from Isaacson but that's a t that's just phenomenal pace right now from Olsen and Marte 29-3 they are these top three are the only guys apart from Westerhoff in the 29th and uh heck i think they might even reach the 28th set this way yeah i mean uh, again if, if, if they work together they can do it marteau fastest sector three of the race in uh, this last lap that he did still leading uh, the amateurs is uh, christian Henden. negretti second glam setter is in third in front of his teammate Ricard Bobberg and Thiago Reiser trying to make uh, you know, uh, a, a better race after the uh, you know chaotic race one he had. As they go on to the uh, backstretch once again on the airpin, uh, Olson still leading this duo. Sector times uh, are in favor of Isaacson this lap. We'll see in sector three. Let's see if Marto goes for it's it, by closer. the way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's as close to Marte. Lifts off. I think that was a lift. Because uh, he knew that he wasn't... That, uh, well, he knew that if he was going to go for the move, that uh, uh, that Olsen would just defend and, and lose some time. So I think kind of what you were talking about earlier, Ron Marte, not worth fighting. Isaacson with another personal best. Also, Marto a little bit slower on that lap than their previous lap. But, I mean... This is this is terrific driving right now. These guys lapping within a tenth or, or two every single lap of their personal best of, of their absolute peak performance. Westerhoff with a 29-2 man. Westerhoff uh, arguably the fastest man today, which is uh, something that I was not expecting because Westerhoff usually was a bit detached on C for Marteau and Bell and uh, Redford uh, last season, uh, but uh, tonight he has been absolutely on it. Did get that race one win. But uh, a long way from it in race two. Gap down to 2.2 seconds now. So that's a little bit wide, although still good pace there from Olsen. Kind of just showing the different lines that you can take. You need to go over that curve and risk the slowdown or just miss it altogether, which isn't, also isn't too bad. Mate, super close to a move then. I thought he was going to go for it. But man, Olsen, Olsen, there's no breaking Olsen. He's absolutely ice cool. Um, he is from Scandinavia anyway, which is notoriously cold. And uh, yeah, he, he's just not not locking a brake, Marco. He's not missing any apexes. This is great driving from the 191. Fantastic stuff, and of course, in the indirectly, he's helping uh, his uh, um, rival there, uh, Isaacson. But of course, second place is nothing to scoff at. As Bartok goes for it once again on the inside, but closing the door is also. Oh, they almost make contact. But still, uh, good defending, and uh, Marteau loses a bit of time. By the way, this lap that just finished, uh, under two tenths of a second, but of course, uh, my maths are terrible, but uh, you know that if it's one tenth, two tenths per lap, uh, it is not going to be enough, Sam. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they've... Uh... Poor, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm guessing here, but um, they've got another uh, four to go at the end of this one. So they need they need half a second a lap right now. It's possible, especially if Isaacson gets a little bit tight because it, I mean Isaacson's got nothing left. I mean, two thousand and Marta, I don't think I've got anything left. But um, he, he's uh, it's more likely going to be Isaacson who uh, who tightens up 
in these uh, closing stages. Of course, if he gets a slowdown, the gap would be absolutely nothing. Backmark is just getting out of the way, Henton, though, with a uh, big slide uh, just before we get to the climax of this race. Quick shout out to Virtual Racing School for uh, being the other title sponsor for this series alongside Apex Racing Academy. Uh, virtual Racing School uh, offering over 50 dates for packs for both road and oval racing, setups, track guides, dates for analysis software, and one on one coaching. So do check out Virtual Racing School as this could be the change for second position. Olsen versus Marteau. Olsen was cautious in race one in combat and arguably he was a bit cautious on that time as well. But he's got a short to run to the next corner and this is who is the braver heading into the second chicane. Olsen does stick his nose up the inside. He's almost into the wall but he is hanging on. It's the Swedish driver and Tobias Olsen with terrific defensive skills there. Marteau got alongside but whilst these guys are fighting for the championship, fighting for second place and maybe fighting for this race win tonight, they are showing each other a lot of respect and that probably confirms Isaacson as the race winner because they've just lost over a second through that little bit of bat saying and it is all war now between these two drivers. Fantastic stuff this is not over just yet Marteau all over the back of Olsen but Olsen uh, not an easy uh, nut to crack uh, let's see now as they enter the airpin and the backstretch. So Mato doing kind of what he needs to do here, just running it in deep. He's as close as he could possibly be, but I think that's maybe a little bit too close because he can get a lot of momentum, but he has got the inside line, and the inside line into the chicane is absolutely paramount. Now, this is a great example of how quick these two cars are, and I thought Mato was struggling a little bit down the straights earlier on. Didn't seem too there, although maybe he did. Maybe he was just pulling in behind. Maybe that was deliberate. I'm not quite sure. But once you have the inside, expect a driver to keep it pinned. Now up to nearly four seconds as we enter the final three laps of this race. Mate having a look again. Olsen does miss the apex this time. But we head into the part of the circuit where um, you really can't overtake. And uh, Olsen doing everything that he needs to at the moment. He knows where, where Mate's quick and he knows how he needs to defend against the Dutch driver. Bit of a respite here for Olsen, a gap to f up to four tenths of a second, but Marteau will certainly come back at him sooner rather than later. As we are heading into the final three minutes of this exciting race two here from Montreal, don't forget, 9.45 GMT. We are going to have the uh, Formula 3.5 Championship live, uh, round date of the season, live from Zandvoort. Oh, I think that's the biggest mistake that Olsen has made in this entire race. Bit of a lockup, but he's able to cover off that inside line. Now he's trying to break the draft as much as he can. Oh, so has he got the straight line speed? West Ham getting past Gestrin back in, but that was always going to happen. Will this move happen? No, Olsen trying to squeeze Marteau slightly. Marteau's not going to make it round there. Now, Olsen, is, has he got another mistake in him? Or is that the extent of it? That was perfect. The chicane, not taking too much uh, curb. Got it nicely stopped. As Gestrin back in, trying to come back this time. West Ham, uh, come on there. He did have problems at early run able to consolidate that move 63 up to seventh position and um, just got uh, this up and then uh, and then one more in fact Mate running out of time it's been a terrific battle between these two and hopefully we see these battles go on for the uh, for the rest of the season top two in the championship Austin will extend his championship lead for ends like this which was uh, something that we really weren't expecting when Mate got pole position by half a second even if Marto was able to get this position, in fact, they would actually be level on points after tonight, heading into round four of the championship. So they take very similar lines this time through the chicane. Uh, Marto uh, still with opportunities. He's not letting that Swedish driver get away. Heartbreaking for the Erpin once again. Incredibly close to each other. A bit of a moment for Olsen putting the power down. And now Olsen he needs to defend massively because Marto is right in his gearbox. So here we go again. This is very similar to what we've seen before though and similar to what Olsen was trying to do earlier on to another driver. Marto looks a little bit more racy there but oh, Olsen just nails that one. He just nails it every single time, gets the card turn, gets it pinned. Last lap of the race. 
but Marte did get a better exit, and the outside line actually heading into turn one is often the better line. It depends how aggressive Olsen's going to be. Marte's going to go around the outside. He's onto the grass. He almost understeers into his rival, but the Dutch driver, the Team Shizu driver, has looking to get this move done finally on the final lap of the race. It's Kitiago Marte, the defending champion, up to second position. Now he just needs to defend into this next corner because Olsen will have the opportunity. He's left it open. Olsen will go up the inside. He forces Marte offline. Now he gets the cut back. Look how Hendon is catching very quickly behind. He's made up a few seconds over the past few laps. Marte again leaving the inside open. And this is very much a single file corner. So if Olsen wants it, he can move up a position. These guys are going to be very, oh. fairly clear of the other IGL Katings cars by the end of the race as Olsen up to second position once again, having to go defensive into the hairpin. Unlike Marte, he is not going to leave that inside oh, open touch. as there's contact between the two of them. Olsen hesitating to turn in, but he's all over the place. So Marte is going to be able to move up into second position. He has had to work for it for a long time. And now Olsen is left fending against his t uh, against the IGL Katings car. And he's now got down. Damage. He He's might even damage. drop back to fifth position as well. But outs in the lead, Niels Eric Isaacson from pole position is going to take his first ever Apex Racing League race victory. Isaacson for IGL Coatings wins at Montreal. Marteau in second place, Hendon on his debut in third. And Larson beats Olsen. And what a terrific battle there, Marco. Marteau, I believe, takes the championship lead with that one. But, uh, well, it was a bizarre final lap because Marteau wasn't defending. And, I mean, no disrespect to Kitiago. I don't think he necessarily had that chicane in uh, uh, planned ahead of time. But, uh, well, in the end, it worked out. Yeah, you can hear. Uh, listen to the onboard sound of the car. Uh, and then they touch. Uh, and now you will hear. Uh, something is rubbing on the floor. Uh. Probably the suspension once again, uh, even though not as dramatic as, in, as the contact we had in race one. Uh, but certainly that right rear wheel doesn't seem very nice to me. And it drops all the way down to fifth place. Uh, but Isaacson, the hero of the day in the pro for race two and for the amateur class. Uh, it's once again Christian Handen winning. Uh, so a big party for the IGL Coatings e-racing uh, team and uh, to back that up uh, we should have uh, in a second uh, the results just for you could we, could we uh, I'm being very um, uh, selfish right now Marco or very demanding but could we get a replay actually of uh, of the onboard for Olsen um, because uh, it, it was just interesting into that hairpin he, he seemed a bit hesitant to kind of turn in um, but I'm, I'm not sure to what extent that was because it was so well mannered throughout and I, I was just going to say before they made contact it was perhaps the first time that either one really kind of got their elbows out the first time that they they were uh, that was maybe some gamesmanship I'm not saying it was you know illegal from Tobias but yeah just see his um, his steering wheel here how much he hesitates yeah, I mean, he, he, he was, I mean, it takes me back to kind of Austria 2016 there, Marco, so I see he's uh, an F1 reference, but, um, you know, very much waiting and, uh, well, a bit like Rosberg that day, you know, he, he lost out because, uh, well, with the way that the contact worked, he, he got the damage. We will, uh, you know, uh, you know, the uh, commentators here in Italy, especially when it's uh, football, but also F1 lately, if it doesn't involve Ferrari, they always say, you know, we let the people at home decide, you know, mob rules. So I will, uh, I, I hate to say that, but uh, we will let the people at home decide and eventually the stewards if a protest is submitted. So results for race two. Here they go. Yes, Niels I, Eric Isaacson with his and IGL Coatings first ever uh, race win, I believe, in Apex Racing League history. Marteau uh, takes the lead of the championship uh, with that second place. And I think it's the highest score as well across the night with a second and a third. Uh, so it wasn't the race win and uh, that, that he was hoping for, but, you know, two podiums is very strong for him. Christine Hendon, what a performance from him. Terrific pace for IGL Coatings rounding out the podium. Then it was Kettle Larson, Tobias Olsen, Chris Rosencrantz. Uh, very under the radar tonight, Rosencrantz, but uh, some great results 
Steven Westerhoff, what could have been for him in that race too? At least he got that race one victory though, and it was in some style as well. Matt Gestrin back and finished in eighth place. Then it was Justin Negretti who had a pretty horrid day, honestly, but at least that race two kept it clean and, and kind of showed what he's capable of finishing in ninth position. Uh, Chuck Murray was in 10th, then it was Christian Glamsetzer, Ricard Boberg, Thiago Reiser, Georgie Zouayen, uh, Philip Russell, Alexander Skeret, Kimboali Charney, Florian Beer. Uh, those last two were a lap down. Uh, Helge Rudd was also a lap down. Schnell was two laps down, but they'll all score points at least. Jazzy won't score points are uh, Riley Torp and Rasmussen. Torp and Rasmussen are uh, not taking the start in that race. So we um, love to have a chat with the drivers. And actually, we've got quite a selection available. So we will first talk with uh, Stephen Westhoff because uh, he won race one after all. So congratulations, uh, Stephen. By my reckoning, that's your first ever victory um, in an Apex Racing League event. I mean, feel free to correct me on that one, but that's quite a return to the series. Yes, uh, you're right. That is my first win. Uh, so I'm very pleased with that. It was a great battle with uh, Olsen uh, until the last lap. Uh, we were on similar pace, some mistakes here and there, and then he got back in the slipstream. And then he could keep up uh, quite well. And in the last, uh, yeah, last lap was very tense. Uh, we made contact, but uh, I still won the race. How did the, well, when you're heading into that final chicane on the last lap, uh, kind of what was going through your mind? Because, you know, when you're crabbing into that chicane of all places near heavy braking zone, were you expecting the car to be quite so settled? Because I was amazed that you managed to get it through that final chicane there. Yeah, it was quite uh, tense to get through there. I'm not sure what would have happened, uh, but I was like, I'm going to try. Uh, worst case, uh, when I hit the brakes, the car does feel off and I just let it go and go straight and let Olsen buy. Uh, but the car, uh, when I pressed the brake, the car, well, it slowed down very well. So I was like, OK, I'm going to commit to this. And then I hoped uh, Olsen wouldn't be on the inside because I had a lot of speed, uh, but he backed out and he backed out, fortunately. Uh, and that's, well, caused me to go first over the line. Race two wasn't quite as successful. I believe you got a, uh, a slowdown and then you had a bit of contact as well at one of the uh, chicanes. Did, did you uh, feel like, uh, what, what, what was your perspective on that, uh, on that bit of contact that you had? Well, first off, the slowdown, it was quite, um, well, unfortunate. I, I broke myself uh, going into the chicane. Uh, and then I got a slowdown. And then every time it was at 0 0.1 seconds, uh, I tried to get, well, try to time it at go to 0, 0 but every time I was a bit off. So the slowdown was much longer than I uh, could have had it. Uh, and then after that, I came back in the pack and I saw the incident uh, back on the replay. Uh, but we went three wide, and I didn't know that at the time when we were going in. Um, I realized it very late that, that we were three wide. Uh, and I saw one guy back out in my mirror, mirror, and I broke so late that I thought, well, nobody could possibly be beside me because, well, um, you can't because you're gonna crash, you're gonna run wide. And then I turned in, and, and in my surprise, uh, I got hit on the rear right wheel, um, which, which I didn't expect. Uh, so that was very unfortunate. Yeah, it was a shame with that one. But uh, I mean, your pace after that was phenomenal. It looked like you were, you, you were setting purple lap times, looked like you were the fastest man out on track. I mean, last season, you, you, you seemed to just be kind of lacking maybe that three tenths to, you know, the likes of Marteau and Bell and uh, Redford and, and, and Co. But tonight you seemed right on pace with them, maybe even, uh, you know, faster than them. Do, is there something... Do you think that you've improved since the end of last season? Uh, yes, I try to make my setups a little bit more uh, stable. So a little bit more understeery, so I can control the car a little bit better. Um, because last season I had a lot of oversteer moments, especially in the first uh, lap. And so now I have a setup which is a bit more understeery and which is a bit more to my liking. And I can push the car a bit harder. Um, and as well, I make use of telemetry now. 
uh, so VRS and uh, pure driving school to, to compare myself to the faster drivers and see where I'm lacking and try to improve uh, on specific corners. Well, that's uh, yeah, awesome to hear, Stephen, and hopefully you can keep that form up for the rest of the season. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, yes, uh, to Tobias Olsen. We had a great uh, few battles in uh, the first race, and I really enjoyed that. Awesome. Well, thanks for having a chat with us, Stephen. And uh, yeah, see you next week. Yes, have a great evening. Stephen Westerhoff there, your race one winner, and then seventh place in race two. Marco, would you like to have a chat with one of the drivers? Yes, let's have a chat with our race two winner, Nils Erik Isaksen. Welcome, uh, Nils. Welcome to the booth. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tell us about your uh, your evening, of course, uh, starting from race one, and of course uh, the great victory in race two. How was it uh, out there? Yeah, the first race I messed up in the start, so I spun up the wheels, so I got behind a lot of teammates. So we decided not to fight because of the team championship. And then I was pole in the second race, and. Um, uh, Again, I came out in front of my teammate and uh, uh, and Tobias and uh, Thiago was coming really fast, but uh, they, I think they started to fight and then I got the, the seconds I needed. Exactly, but uh, I, we noticed that uh, even when they were not fighting and trying to catch, uh, 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 you know, catch up to you, you, even when you were under pressure, you were setting very consistent and quick lap times, so you weren't that phased out there, uh, you know, uh, you seemed like uh, you were in control of the situation, at least from up here. Yeah, I have some, some, uh, some laps in training, so, uh, yeah, but uh, that's as fast as I can go, so. Well, congratulations on what was a fantastic victory in uh, in race two. What is the uh, your what are your plans for the for the you know for the rest of the championship? I will try to uh, uh, attend all the races, but uh, when it's on Saturdays, it's not that easy for a family <laughs> a father. But I'm I'm trying to uh, to take the rest of the races, and uh, then we will see. I also want to join in on the Porsche Cup uh, uh, Apex League uh, when that one comes up again later. And I would also like to thank Apex. It's a very good, uh, uh, good leagues and uh, very good in, uh, in the broadcast and uh, the media. Very good. Kudos to you guys. Thank you, Nils. We try to do our best. Well, congratulations once again, and thank you for thanking us. If you have other people to thank or sponsors, this is your moment. Yeah, of course, my teammates. Uh, I wouldn't win the last race without uh, Christian behind, I think. So I would like to every... We did a good, uh, two good races for the team today. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks to you, Nils, and enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, champagne. <laughs> you too, thank you. And that was uh, Nils Eric Isaacson, winner of race two. We still have a bit of time, uh, Sam, so feel free to bring another guest uh, into the, uh, uh, you know, into the into into the room. Uh, yeah. So next up, we'll have a chat with uh, Tobias Olsen, um, who um, in the end finished in second and fifth places. Um, kind of bad luck out there tonight, Tobias, because uh, you kind of lost two very tight last lap battles first up race one um talk us through that that last lap from your perspective did you know that uh the driver ahead of you Westerhoff, had you know that damage after your contact at the heaven uh oh i did not know that actually <laughs> it was pretty tough races tonight uh, i didn't really feel i had the, the pace tonight but yeah Yes, it's down to the to the setup, I think. Uh, but yeah, it was it was really tight in the, the last chicane <laughs> and the first race. And the second race was, uh, yeah, it was a good fight with Marteau. Uh, 
at the end. A uh, bit, bit of contact in the, in the last hairpin there, but uh, yeah. Anyway, decent result, I think. It, it looked like a terrific battle from um, from our perspective. It seemed seemed like a very fair battle throughout. You're both leaving each other, you know, room at whenever you're racing with one another. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good respect in the battles, I think. So that's good. We've uh, still got uh, a few more rounds of the championship, of course, to go. Only three down, still five to go. But uh, it's going to yeah. be very close between yourself and Marto in in the championship. Uh, you think it's between you two for the for the title, or do you think there's anyone else who could perhaps get involved? Ooh. Right, right now it feels like it's between us two. But yeah, you never know. Uh, I think it will be very tight on who's leading the championship of tonight. I don't know really. Maybe he's leaving with one point or something. <laughs> and next up, we head to Zanvort. Uh, I think a circuit that maybe divides of opinion a bit, but what's your feelings towards it? I think the track will, will suit me pretty good, I think. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, best of luck for that, Tobias. Is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah, to you guys. Thanks for the good work and uh, see you next week. Awesome. See you then, Tobias. Bye bye bye. <laughs> to the bias Olsen there, your second and fifth place finisher. Uh, Marco, maybe time for one more interview. Yes, we can have a chat with Chris Rosenkrantz. Welcome to the boot, Chris. And uh, well, you had a very interesting race one. Uh, I think uh, spin uh, maybe yes, one spin in race one. You had to fight back. Race two, you managed to finish in to finish in sixth. So tell us about your evening. Yes, uh, the race was very good for me, or both races very good, uh, but uh, for me it was a really, really hard day because uh, I bowled the track uh, early in the morning and drove the day my first laps there. So I had a really, really hard weekend, uh, had problems with the car and in the end result I'm not so happy with the speed, but uh, the, the positions where I am are quite okay. Well, I, I can't imagine a tough, a tough race track than this to learn because uh, in other tracks when you make a mistake uh, you go into the grass and you continue but here if you make a mistake uh, you hit the wall and you have to reset to the pit so I, I, I am really really uh, you know positively surprised by your results tonight knowing this fact so well congratulations on that and uh, uh, you know how, how did you how, how did you find this this track it, it was new to you uh, how did you deal with the, you know the walls being this close and the track being being so so difficult and the curbs especially these curbs are very very high they can launch the car towards those walls so it was uh, I, mean, I can imagine very tough to get uh, this quick this quickly on, on on in this track yeah yes thanks but uh, the track is not completely uh, unpopular for me because i know the track from games like formula one but i drove there never on i racing but iRacing has a different driving physics like uh, Formula One games. Speaking of Formula One, we are going to Zandvoort next week. So, do you know that racetrack? Do you uh, have you have you driven on it? You're in a racing. Uh, do you know it? How, how do you feel about it? Uh, so, I drove in Zandvoort already. Never in iRacing, but I know the track from other simulations. It's a quite interesting track with different lines you can use because it's a bit IndyCar style. Well, I never thought of it like this, but you are absolutely correct. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, well, Chris, thank you for joining us. Before we let you go, anyone you would like to thank? Yes, huge thanks uh, to N7 SimLab for the racing simulator and have all a nice day. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Chris, and we'll hopefully catch you next time. Yes. Bye. And Sam, this was a great point from Chris Rosenkrantz, because if you drive on this racetrack, uh, on the F1 uh, games uh, or, or other simulators, uh, they present you the track uh, sort of an F1 uh, 
kind of situation. No? But as I've said many, many times, this track was scanned by racing when the NASCAR uh, uh, Xfinity series was there. And this is the reason why we have these uh, white uh, sausage curves, which are huge and are almost everywhere. And uh, whilst they were made uh, in order to better accommodate uh, the NASCAR cars and you know maybe don't have them cut the the the, the, the corners as much huh? of course especially for the open wheelers they can be quite destabilizing so you come here and you say oh okay montreal and then you jump on, on a chicane and you find uh, you know you're doing uh, you're on two wheels all of a sudden so uh, it's it was quite a shock for me when i bought the track in a racing uh, many many years ago uh, to find those uh, those surprises on the apex of basically every corner and the chicanes of course and if you go on top of that with the with, you know with the bottom of the car uh, the car loses any kind of steering ability and you are heading straight for the wall no questions asked yeah and also another element uh, to, to mention uh when you're learning about this track on the f1 game it's pretty much a different track it's twice as wide. The chicanes yes. are totally different. I mean, the second chicane in particular. I mean, it, it's it feels like two different corners. You, you turn right, hesitate, turn left. In the F1 games, you pretty much straight line it, and then uh, also the chicane after that as well. It's twice as wide. Um, it, it feels totally different. I mean, the lap times are probably uh, five seconds faster if you took one of these F3 cars round um, the uh, the F1 version. So no very tricky to uh to to drive um to, to, to learn this circuit and uh, of course Zanvor will be tricky to learn as well that'll be the next round of the championship overtaking gonna be quite tricky but to be fair in this car flat out final corner uh should be able to get a bit of a draft there and, and you know uh tarzan corner a decent braking area uh so maybe we'll see some uh, overtaking around that part of the track that'll be with you in seven days time and the best way to catch it is of course on apex racing tv on our youtube channel and the best way to catch it by uh by that is to subscribe to apex racing tv and also leave a like on this video then you're more likely to get uh it recommended to you and also more likely for other people to get recommended our videos so we super appreciate it if you could give us a support in that form and you can also support us by following our uh, tw uh, our, uh twitter uh instagram and facebook pages as well we are where we are posting highlights and updates of everything that's going on on apex racing tv once again big thanks to the title sponsors for this championship apex racing academy and virtual racing school for offering some super uh, services and also providing some fantastic prizes for the drivers and also thanks to our overlay uh, designer sdk gaming the absolute best place for overlays and live timing in I racing. Uh, we'll be back with you then in seven days' time for round four of this Apex Racing Academy Formula 3 VRS Super Series. But for now, from myself, Sam Fitzpatrick, and from Marco Barbanier, we are going to say goodbye for now, and we'll see you next time.